Hello fellow Changelings and welcome to a mini-series Clear Clarity Changeling 101. I'm John Marco, storyteller and the man with too many NPCs that always get away from me, and here's my wife. Hello. That, that's it? Alright, fine. Let's do this. I'm Michelle, and I'm the head storyteller for Wichita's Changeling Four Seasons LARP event. I like drama-filled plots, forgetting how to roll dice, and being so full of anxiety I apologize 90% of the time. Encouraging, dear. Now, this is hopefully the first video in a series that will be exploring the various components and ideas for New World of Darkness's Changeling the Loss, which in my opinion is the only good thing that came out of New World of Darkness setting. If you don't know what World of Darkness is, we may do a deeper video of that, but for now, it's a role-playing game based on more social and political shenanigans. But it can be goofy and fun, it has timed events and compatible elements. And is more individually goal-oriented than group. It's a court system, which means everyone is connected through a society that functions best and safest by working in the same general area with laws understood or mostly obeyed by other players. We could talk forever about that, but for today's video we are assuming you have a general idea on how the world of Changeling works and at least know the concept of roleplay and impromptu theater. We are going to just dissect, explain, and explore the Changeling character sheet, breaking down the simple parts and delving deeper into the more complicated aspects of the sheet so that you have a clue what your options are when it comes to all these dots, numbers, and slashing off with pencils. What you see now is a basic character sheet. We could go into the four page one, but for all intents and purposes, if you know how to use this one, you should know how to use the other. There will be parts of these sheets that could be given their own episode, but we are going to give the basic rundown so you can look at the sheet and understand what you can do and what you can't. We are going to start with the very first thing, Name Player Chronicle. We know coming up with a perfect name can be difficult, though we suggest you think of what your name was before you were a changeling, if that changed, or if you wish to keep it. Today we are going to build our model changeling, and her name will simply be Sophie. Player will be Michelle. Chronicle is usually skipped or irrelevant at the time, usually the name of the story you are playing in that you may not realize has a name until the end of the actual game. We aren't going to worry about it for now. Moving on to Vices and Virtues, this is where we pull out the two books you need to make a character. There are a lot more, but we're just going to use these two books. Now for those of you who are familiar with the old world system, there was a concept of archetypes. A simplified explanation of your character's overall feel or personality equips that when achieved through roleplay rewarded you. Vices and virtues work in a similar fashion. Here's the list of vices. Pride, lust, gluttony, sloth, wrath, greed, and envy. And here's a list of virtues. Charity, faith, fortitude, hope, Justice, prudence, temperance. I feel like there's a thing going on here. <laughs> seven deadly versus seven holy, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I still prefer archetypes. World of Darkness is quite simply a setting that is always trying to rot itself. The world is aggressively decaying and destroying its own moral compass. The sorts of things you encounter are selfish, cruel, and manipulative. It takes itself very seriously, most of the time, and the strain on the mentality on humans and changelings is very powerful. You often end up losing willpower, which we will discuss in more detail soon. For now, consider it your innate mental strength. Vices and virtues allow you to regain willpower without having to wait from game session to game session to recover. It isn't easy to do and plays on the character's strengths or vices addictions. This is heavily roleplayed aspect to the game, requiring the process of an in-character temptation and eventually acceptance of your selfish desire which would trigger the vice and restore one willpower up to storyteller discretion. This cannot be easily gained through simple, I'm going to be a terrible person and get some willpower back, but an actual event you encounter and fall for and gain character growth even if it may seem more like a character destruction. Virtues work in a similar manner, but since the world is so decrepit and warped towards selfish cruelty, it is much harder goal to achieve, and so it rewards on a grander scale. Upon achieving your virtue through hard-earned roleplay, you restore all lost willpower points. This has to be done through a sacrifice of your own. I mean, you may have charity, but dropping a few coins in a homeless man's bowl will not restore your willpower, but an act of true virtue with no strings attached and positive character growth will not only restore willpower, but be recognized by a storyteller, which no matter the outcome Outcome. could be fun and dramatic. Well, that was depressing. If you wish to know a description of vices and virtues, we plan on covering in more detail in another video. But if you can't wait, you're welcome to ask or seek out the World of Darkness core book. You can also Google it.
Let's go ahead and fill in Sophie's vices and virtues. She is charitable, but has an angry streak that gets her in trouble. So we'll put wrath there. We can cover concept real easily. This is just the idea behind your character. What inspires them, what they like to do, that kind of thing. This doesn't give you any mechanical benefit other than thinking out your character concept. So let's move on. We are now venturing into the actual changeling only aspects of the character sheet. So we are going to go over what we are doing with our game when it comes to seeming core and kit. It should still be helpful, but we cannot venture into all the options in this one video. When you are taken by the fae, the way you are treated, the environment, and your mental scape changes you. The weird, which is magic, changes you. You become a changeling. Get it? Changelings fall into six types, which are called seemings. These seemings often share traits, emotional scapes, memories, and backstories. True fae who treat their captives a certain way produce a certain kind of changeling. The six seemings are Beast, Darkling, Elemental, Fairest, Ogre, and Wizened. Each one of these offers a benefit gained from your time spent in Arcadia and an issue due to the abuse you endured. These are called Blessing and Curse, and no matter which one you pick, you will have this. Here we see a tree representing one type of semi beast. Each branch is a different type called a kith. Now kiths are different types of changelings within a certain type of semi. They are all beast seemings, but each different trait allows for different kinds of beasts. Kiths each have their own unique abilities similar to blessings but not as powerful. Just adds bonus to various dice rolls. These are like if you wish to be a beast and a cat, you would Choose the kit that represents the animal you spent time in Arcadia as. Now we have to go over courts. Upon escaping the clutches of the true fae, you will find yourself confused and disoriented, perhaps even to the point where you are no longer in a time period you understand. Being gone 50 years could do that. You will need to seek out people who understand you, who know what you've gone through. Other change. While your innate instincts aren't usually as cutthroat as vampires, you are also not pack-oriented like werewolves. You are closer to humans than the supernatural stuff, and on the power scale, you can't really compete with other supernatural beings. So, you need Need a place to call your own. A changeling court is a place like that, a community of like-minded people that embrace, teach, and aid each other. In the main changeling book, there are four courts based on the four seasons and also four emotional states, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, the emotions being desire, wrath, fear, and sorrow, respectively. Each court has an anointed ruler called a king or queen. Each court offers powers based on the seasons or emotion, which helps add a uniqueness to your character and also the easiest way to gather magic for your skill set. Courts, of course, can be very complicated and have a hierarchy within, but each one is unique to the area it is in and how it is run, allowing storytellers to craft mood and setting that is unique and special for you and your group specifically. Think of it like a club, society gathering, or social group. You don't usually live with them or share a dwelling, but go to a place to speak with leaders and engage with others. You also don't have to choose this right away, but enter is what's called a court list. A dangerous approach that could get your character in a lot of trouble if the others suspect you being a loyalist to your former master. It could offer a good role play and character growth, or just get you killed. Either way, this is an option if you wish to flush out your character in this way. Courts can be complicated or simple and you can learn more about them in specific books and online but for now you have an idea of how the courts run so let's go ahead and get started we'll go ahead and fill in sophie's seeming kit and court Sophie is a beast and a mouse girl. we also know she'd be summer due to her strong sense of justice and her anger toward what happened to her moving on now, we are into, as our friends say, crunchy bits. The part where you figure out your best moves and your worst grooves. You can see here the word attributes. These are your three core, well, attributes. Defined as a quality or feature regarded as a characteristic or inherent part of someone or something. These are your innate and natural abilities and who you are as a person originates. Are you a brainiac, a social butterfly, a force of raw power? You can see listed here three groups. We call them mental, physical, and social. They break down into three categories each. Now, we are officially in numbers and dots, so let's pause and talk about dots. The world of darkness runs on dots, no matter if you're LARPing or doing the tabletop. The amount of dots you have in any group represents your ability or skill level in that thing. In Changeling, dots represent 10-sided dice. So, the more dots you have, the more dice you roll. We will go into specific dice rolling mechanics in another video, but for now, all you need to know is every dot is a dice, and the more dice you have, 
the better your chances of success in a dice roll are. So looking back at the attributes, you can see that each section begins with at least one dot. This is because every human starts with something. We all have some level of mental, physical, and social attributes, even if we suck at it. What we are trying to say is that when you begin with one dot each, you now have a set of allowance of dots per group. We suggest you mark your strongest group first and your weakest second and then you have a middle. Your strongest gets five dots, your middle gets four, and your weakest gets three. You cannot max out one line with five dots with these points. That has to be purchased later with experience. The highest dot for now is four. Let's go ahead and fill in what Sophie's stats would be. Sophie's strongest ability would be her mental with a focus on resolve. She is rather stubborn and determined, so we went ahead and put three dots in there and one dot each in intelligent and wits using up five moving on we chose physical for her second trait with a focus on dexterity we put two into her dex and two into her stamina but left her strength at one because she's a small mouse girl who can't open jars we have spent the four allowed points with the middle trait finally we are at our weakest trait which is social with only three lonely dots we've put two into composure and one into manipulation but she just isn't very noticeable so we leave her presence at one we've completed the allotted points for attributes and our little mouse girl is starting to take form, even if she's not happy about it. Now for skills. They're similar to attributes, so they share mental, physical, and social aspects. Skills are gathered abilities that you have worked to earn. They aren't innate or natural. You have to earn every dot through schooling, training, or hard lessons of life. We aren't going to sit here and explain every skill in the list, but we may explore that in later videos. You do the same setup as before. You pick your best, your middle, and your worst skill set. This often has to do with your attributes. You seek what you are good at and train that and perfect that. Your best receives 11 dots, your middle receives 7, and your weakest receives 4. Remember, you can't put 5 dots with these points. You can only buy the 5th dot with experience later. Let's go ahead and spin Sophie's. Her best is mental, so we're going to spin dots here. Second is physical, so we're going to spin those dots. Finally, social, so we're going to go ahead and spin those dots. Now it's time to pick specializations. These give you one bonus dice if you are using your ability in a specific circumstance that is connected with your specific training. You get to pick three specialties and write them into the space given beside the skill. You need to be specific enough to warrant your training, but not too specific that you'll never use it. An example is, when Sophie sneaks, we can write barefoot on dirt. Meaning, if she's outside and not on concrete, she will stealth easier. Here are her specialties. Now we get to choose a skill specialty based on athletics, brawl, or stealth, allowing your character to have some ability in combat or dexterous situations. We already wanted something in stealth, so we went ahead and put bite into brawl. So if she decides to take a bite out of someone, she gets a plus one, meaning another dice. Now we will take time to write down our blessing and curse for being a B-Simi. And it's time to talk about contracts. Oh boy, one of the biggest parts of being a changeling. What are contracts? They are agreements between true fae and the living embodiments of the natural world. They have agreements, clauses, and bestow powers and knowledge and connections with these embodiments. Because you are a changeling and part of you is the same as the true fae, you also have the option of learning these contracts. These act as your main supernatural power, gifted from the time in Arcadia, or learned through your court or friends. They often have a cost to activate and some sort of trick to them to make it easier. This is where some beasts get their powers of claws and fame, and elementals the ability to use their Captain Planet powers to destroy you. There are tons upon tons of contracts. Some are specific to your seeming and others to your courts. Some are traded for with goblins, and some anyone can pick up if you can find the right teacher. Just remember, you've struck a deal with a true embodiment, and you are paying a cost to them every time you use these contracts. We would love to talk to you about all the different kinds, but for now, we'll just take our five character dots we were given and buy from the Changeling Core book. We're not going to get fancy. We've gone ahead and picked Fleeting Summer, two dots, Fan Talon, two dots, and Smoke, one dot. One is available from the court she is in, one from the type of seeming she is, Beast, and finally, a universal contract that helps us be sneakier. Now, breaking down the contract, if we choose, say, Fame and Talent, we can see we have two dots here. The dots themselves don't represent the dice as much as the level of power you have access to. Dot 1 is the first ability you can use if needed, and Dot 2 is a slightly more powerful but unique ability compared to the first one. Though the contracts will share a theme with their name, each ability can and often is unique and progressively more powerful. So the more dots you have, the more you have access to. It's a good idea to 
to study your contracts and know what you have available. You never know when the situation will come up that could use a little bit more power. Moving back a bit, I'm going to take some time to talk about merits. These are specific advantages your character has. Your character does not have these unless you purchase them either at character creation or later through experience under storyteller discretion. There are three types of merits going along with the theme of the attributes mental, physical, and social. You have seven points or dots to use. Most of the merits are in the World of Darkness core book, and they are ones anyone can get. They often have prerequisites, which may mean the merit requires you to have dots in a certain skill or ability before you can purchase it. Once again, once again, once again the best way is to go through this and actually look it up, but an overview of these will come someday in another video. There are changeling specific ones, only a handful in the main book that play off your powers that you have. Let's go ahead and spin Sophie's merit points. Fast reflex allows her to react fast in combat. Two dots with a prerequisite of three dots in dexterity. Danger sense, since it's danger before it gets ya. Two dots with a prerequisite of three dots in dexterity. Mantle. Three dots in Summer Court. Mantle represents how much you embody your court element. It also affects contracts and is pretty much required for all changelings. Moving on. Hold on, hold on. Back up. Mantle is pretty much required, right? Let's talk about this. When you sign up for your court, you have made a pledge. More on this later. And have literally connected yourself to that court's embodiment. Sophie here has connected to Summer and now harnesses the aspect of such. When you are around her, she may feel warm. Plants around her may be more dry or sunburned. Her overall feels the blazing sun. Sometimes you can feel the anger, the burning wrath falling off them, the vendetta that they hold against their former keepers. Mantle is often part of your court contracts. When you are picking your cool powers, make sure your merits line up. Sometimes you can really help yourself by connecting your abilities together. It's okay either way. Build a character that you love and want to play. So I still suggest getting Mantle. Alright, still here? We've got a bit more to cover. Didn't know so much could fit on a single character sheet, did ya? But we're on the home stretch. Thank goodness, all these Drawings are getting hard to do. Boy, was I ambitious. It was your idea. I know, but there was a need and I must feel it. Onward! Right. Uh, let's see here. Flaws. Oh, those parts of your character that hinders them in some way but gives you some new freebie points if you want or help you balance out your merits? Nope. That's old world, dear. These serve no purpose other than hindering your character. You can have them written down so your character feels more flushed out. They have a few suggestions in the back of the World of Darkness Corbel. Oh, well, that's not as fun. Alright, here's what you do with flaws. Look over the back of the book for suggestions, think about your character and their vice, and decide how else they are impacted. If something catches your fancy, write it down, but we expect you to roleplay that part. It's on the paper, it's meant to be a part of your character. If you just generally know what you are handicapped in some way, or have a stutter, or some other thing, play it out. This is a roleplay, and we expect you to put your best foot forward when being the character you've created. No one knows them better than you. No one wants a perfect person. Conflict and drama and resolutions comes from characters who struggle to find their place or fight for what they want. There you go. This may not be how all storytellers do it, but it's what we expect from our players. Continuing on. Health. Self-explanatory. At the bottom of your character sheet, it tells you how to add your health up and you fill in the dots. The boxes is how you mark your damage. Willpower, your mental strength. This is a very important aspect of any World of Darkness character, and the points here can be rolled, spent, and gained. Here are some things you can do with willpower. You can spend a point of willpower to gain a plus three modifier on a roll during a turn. Storyteller may decide some rolls cannot have a willpower be spent to add this bonus. A willpower point can be spent to add two to your character's stamina, resolve, composure, or defense to resist different kinds of attacks. Regaining willpower can be done through achieving your vice or virtue, as we have said, or simply a good night's rest. Sometimes accomplishing a hard task that results in a goal reach can restore some willpower, or completing an entire game arc session, not just a single game night. Let's talk about two big changeling things. Weird and Glamour. Connected but not the same. Weird is the amount of affinity you have to your face side and Arcadia. The magic of the true fae is weird. They are weird and it is them. But for changelings, you just carry it. And it gives you allowances and benefits, but also addictions and handicaps because the more weird you have, the more like them you are. 
The higher the weird, the easier it is to access your powers, giving you more glamour to spend on your contracts and abilities, allowing you to carry more goblin fruit you've gathered from the hedge. If your weird reaches 6 or higher, you can actually increase your attributes and skills past the 5 dots. Weird affects your dreams and memories, powers, and other stuff that could be beneficial. But the issue with weird is that it's very much a double-edged sword. For all the good that it offers you, it can also double the bad. You are more fae-like. Your connection to your humanity is not as prominent, and you find yourself dreaming more and more of Arcadia and its splendors. You are becoming more and more attractive to the true fae. Drawing their eyes easier it is much harder to hide from them because they can see you easily. Your weird is like a path back to them because, as I said before, they are weird weird and weird is them. You also become addicted to glamour and you crave it. You need fresh glamour more and more. You can't live without it. You are a drug addict as your weird level grows. Your need for it is all you think about. These drawbacks can drastically affect your everyday action to the point where it would be just easier to lose yourself to your face side. For now, just know that it factors into your ability to do certain things, which mostly means your glamour pool, which is what we have next. Glamour is your tangible magic, the thing that you have on you that you can spend and use to activate abilities, contracts, and invoke vows and pledges. Glamour, willpower, and the mar mantle are what you most often see in contracts. Changelings can obtain glamour from a few sources. One is from fruit in the hedge called goblin fruit, which has various different abilities. The issue is harvesting can be very difficult and at times downright dangerous. You can also only carry an amount that is allowed by your weird level. But the main way most changelings get their glamour fix is one of the other reasons you have quartz based on emotion. Human emotions is something that can be converted into glamour. Mortal men's power of emotion is something that most true fae can't comprehend, just mimic. It's something that has power to it that can be harvested, converted into glamour for changelings. So, you have the four courts we talked about earlier. Their emotions, they are associated with desire, wrath, fear, and sorrow. This is what the court excels at obtaining. You will always get more glamour harvesting the emotion you are sworn to than by any other, though you can still gather from other emotions. Anyway, we have Sophie's weird and glamour here, starting at base level. One weird allows her ten slots of glamour, but she starts at one half, so five. There are charts that let you know what level of weird you need for slots of glamour, but for now, we are going to go base with it. I think we're nearing the end here. Clarity. The morality and level of connection with your fey and human side can be summed up in this rising and falling bar. The higher the bar, the more you are able to tell reality for insanity, as well as the supernatural versus the normal. It's a balancing act because you may begin to forget what happened to you in Arcadia as your clarity rises. And if you become disconnected with your fey side, it can be damaging, if not fatal. But... If it drops down, you go nuts! Okay, well, not as easy as that, but the lower the clarity, the less you see the wrong in things, the less you see things for what they are. You struggle with telling fact from fiction and start to think everything is just alternative, never mind. Anyway, clarity is your ability to tell the difference between our world and the fey one, as well what is morally right and wrong depending on character's moral compass and the storyteller. So once we filled that in, there we go. We got some addition to do down in these areas, but that is just a simple step-by-step -step part. So we're done. Is Sophie done? I think so. Let's, uh, oh. What, oh? Pledges. We, we, do, we don't have time. But, but they're super important. <sighs> Fine. Pledges are magically sealed deals between changelings, mortals, and other beings. They are sealed oaths, promises, and allegiances that are held together through glamour, names, and other objects. They often don't come into play with your character until you have played a bit, but most assume that you have taken at least a minor pledge in the court that you are with. There. Okay, so... For now, Sophie has a pledge with Summer Court's King. She hasn't had a chance to, to form alliances or remotely with anyone, so for now she's fine with this. So that's it, guys. That's how we look at the character sheet for Changelings and kind of fill it out. I hope it helped you get your brain thinking about why it is how it is. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs up and leave a comment. Here's a list of other video ideas we'd like to do for our Changeling kids. We worked super hard this time and hope it shows. Thanks, leave questions below, and we'll do our best to answer. See you in the next video. This was Clear Clarity. <laughs>